lots of students asked me for help with the Cognition Development Unit. While I don't have longer videos, I have made this revision video. I've also included a set of flashcards for this unit in the Psychboost app. My app is designed to test your knowledge of all the topics in the A-level actively. It's on iOS and Android, and if you want to try it out, all of the paper want flashcards are free. If instead you want to tour of support videos with questions from all three papers, you can access over 16 hours of these, as well as hundreds of printable resources over on my Patreon. But enough of that, let's get started. Piaget's theory of cognitive development. Piaget suggests that the development of cognition depends on a process of active discovery. This is the child performing actions on the world and developing schemas as a result of these actions. This is referred to as the child as scientist schemas or packages of mental information, knowledge, formed from experience. When we gain new information about the world that doesn't fit our existing schema, we're in a state of disequilibrium. This is unpleasant, and in order to return to equilibrium, we need to use either assimilation, the new information is added to an existing schema, or accommodation, existing schema are adapted to fit the new information, or new schemas are formed. Piaget suggested all children pass through biologically determined stages of intellectual development, which could be identified by cognitive abilities, such as object permanence, understanding an object still exists, even when it's hidden from view, conservation, understanding the quantity of an item or group is the same despite changes in appearance, for example, closer, egocentrism, the inability to imagine the world from another's perspective, class inclusion, understanding that categories of objects have subsets, for example, big cats, a superordinate group, and tigers, a subordinate group. Stage 1. Sensorimotor. Birth to two years. Learns about the world from first performing instinctual reflexes to intentional actions. Starting to construct mental representations of objects, schemas. Develops object permanence. Stage 2. Preoperational. Two to seven years. Starts to talk, however unable to use logic effectively so struggles with conservation and class inclusion tasks, and is still egocentric. Stage 3. Concrete operational. 7 to 11 years. Can perform a mental set of logical thoughts and operation, but only on objects, events they can see. Concrete. Better performance at conservation, egocentrism, and class inclusion tasks. Stage 4. Formal operational. 11 plus years. Able to understand abstract logic capable of hypothetical and deductive reasoning. Evaluations. Sensoria motor, object permanence. Piaget, 1963, allowed children to play with a toy, a ball, which he then covered with a blanket. Finding children under eight months wouldn't search for the toy, but children over eight months would search for the toy, demonstrating the older children realized the ball still existed. Pre-operational. Ecocentrism. Piaget and Einhalder, 1956, sat children in front of a model of three mountains, each was unique, snowy, with a cross, with a hut, and placed a doll on the opposite side. Found children older than seven could decenter and pick the correct image that showed the doll's view. However, younger children could not. Pre-operational, beaker conservation task. Water was moved from one of two identical beakers into a thinner and taller beaker. Seven-year-olds failed in conservation, saying there was now more water in the new beaker. Piaget's research has had significant implications for educational practice. For example, there might be little use in role play before children are no longer egocentric. Also, when to teach different aspects of mathematics is dependent on stage. Evidence suggests Piaget might have underestimated the cognitive abilities of children. For example, McGarrigal and Donaldson. They use a naughty teddy to move counters. In this study, children were far more likely to conserve and correctly say they were the same number of counters. Much of the research in this area assumes that a lack of ability equals a lack of understanding. This is an inference, and it might be that children are simply unable to communicate effectively, or misunderstand the nature of the tasks presented. Vygotsky's Theory of Cognitive Development Vygotsky suggests that the development of cognition depends on social interaction, culture. This is the child internalizing the understanding of other people by using the tools of that culture, for example, language and technology. This is referred to as child as apprentice, suggests the role of language, semiotics, is particularly important for cognitive development, with external speech developing into egocentric speech, which then develops into inner speech, for allowing higher mental functions, the zone of proximal development, ZPD. 
distance between what the child is currently able to do independently and what the child can do with the help of others. The child's potential ability. Experts such as parents, teachers and older siblings help the child pass through the ZPD and move on to harder tasks. Experts achieve this by scaffolding, providing a supportive framework to help the child complete the task, but slowly withdrawing support until the child can complete the task independently. For example, at first demonstrating the task, then giving instructions, to just providing general clues. Evaluations Wood and Middleton, 1975, observed 12 mothers teaching their children to build a tower. The most successful at teaching were those seen to scaffold their instructions adapting up or down depending on the child's abilities. Vygotsky's research has practical applications, suggesting an important role for one-to-one -one tuition education. These ideas can also be applied by teachers in the classroom, allowing children to play a more active role. There are cross-cultural differences in concept development. This supports Vygotsky's idea that cognitive development is due to social interactions. This also means Vygotsky's work is not culturally biased. Vygotsky's theory shows a child as an active participant in the development of their own cognitive abilities. Piaget's theory suggests a child is more passive, passing through the biological stages and gaining schema along the way. As the theory focuses on cognitive factors, it fails to consider the biological and maturational limitations that children face in picking up new tasks. For example, young children are unable to use formal logic, even with significant scaffolding. Bergeon's explanation of early infant abilities. Bejon argues that infants have a physical reasoning system, an innate knowledge of the physical world. This hardwired cognitive framework gives a basic understanding of physical principles, such as object permanence, gravity, and causality, helping infants navigate their environment, interact with objects, and predict outcomes. These early infant abilities are thought to be innate, present from birth, but also develop rapidly within the first year of life through experience and learning. Bejon used violation of expectations research to test for the physical reasoning system. Infants two and a half months plus tend to look longer at events that violate their expectations, impossible events, such as objects appearing to defy gravity or passing through solid barriers. This increased looking time is interpreted as a sign of surprise or confusion, suggesting that infants have formed expectations about how the physical world should behave based on their innate understanding of physical principles. Bejon's violation of expectation research. Bejon, truck and ramp. Infants shown a toy truck rolling down a ramp, habituation stage. In the experimental, impossible stage, a box is placed in the track in the way of the truck. The box is then hidden by a screen. Infants look longer when the truck seemed to pass through the box. The box had been secretly removed. This indicates that the infants were surprised by the violation of their expectation about solidity and they have object permanence, as the box was hidden. Agatha and Bejon's Mini Mouse Study A mini Mouse doll was moved from one side of a screen to another, habituation stage. Infants looked longer at the experimental, impossible stage, when the doll moved from one side of a screen with a cutout to the other side, without appearing to move through the cutout section. There were two dolls on either side of the cutout section. This indicates that the infants were surprised by the violation of their expectation about object permanence. They assumed the movement of an occluded object. Evaluations Bejon's research strongly challenges Piaget's research that suggests that the age at which infants can represent objects, object permanence, is eight months. In Piaget's research, it may be that the children are simply unable to communicate effectively or misunderstand the nature of the tasks presented. Bejon's research has face validity. Many animals' ability to reason about the physical world is innate. For example, infant animals such as zebra can run from predators soon after birth suggesting a basic pre-programming that allows them to identify predators and navigate the environment effectively, providing survival value. It makes sense that humans would have some basic pre-programming. Bejon's research depends on the use of inferences. While this is the only option with infants, the inference that increased looking indicates an infant surprise that physical principles being violated may be mistaken. Cashon and Cohen argue infants may look at unexpected events because they're novel, not because they understand physical principles. Bejon claims that the physical reasoning system is present from birth. However, the infants used in the study are two and a half months old or more, not newborn babies. It could be these early infant abilities are not innate, but are learned through early experience. The development of social cognition. Social cognition. Mental, cognitive processes that relate to the social world, such as understanding other people's intentions, perspectives, and emotions. 
These can be worked out by interpreting other people's behaviour. According to Salman, the development of social cognition happens by passing through levels of perspective taking. This is moving from an egocentric perspective to an understanding that others' perspectives are shaped by culture and morality. Stage zero, egocentric, three to six years. Note others have thoughts separate from their own, but will often confuse with their own. Stage one, social informational role taking, six to eight years, can reliably consider someone's perspective, but one person at a time. Stage two, self-reflective role taking, eight to 10 years, can fully appreciate the perspective of one person, step into another's shoes. Stage 3, mutual third-party role-taking, 10 to 12 years, can simultaneously consider multiple people's perspectives. Stage 4, social and conventional system, societal role-taking, 12 to adult, knows views are influenced by culture and values. Evaluations. Guruchari and Salman, 1982, found 40 out of 41 children in a five-year longitudinal study developed as expected by Salman. Selman and Byrne, 1974, found that when presented with Dalai attacks and asked to describe the viewpoints of the characters, there was a correlation between age and stage of perspective in line with Selman's theory. Fitzgerald and White, 2003, found when children were told by parents to take the perspective of the victim when being punished, the perspective taking was more developed, demonstrating parenting style is linked to perspective taking. Selman's theory can be criticized for not including a role for understanding others' emotion or feeling empathy when taking the perspective of others. The entire focus of the theory is on children understanding another's perspective. Understanding the stage a child is in has important implications for both conflict resolution in schools, with teachers better able to deal with issues relating to bullying and racism, but also can be applied to family therapy, helping parents better understand behavioural issues in relation to their child's stage of social cognition. Hey there, as you're still watching, I'm guessing you'll find this video useful. As I release content right up to the exams, don't forget to subscribe so you know when new videos are uploaded. Also, as this video is being released, I'm on around 50,000 subscribers, and I'd love to get to 100k at some point in the next few years. The Theory of Mind and the Sally Ann Study Theory of Mind Most people have an innate theory of mind mechanism. This is a cognitive process that helps us understand that other people have internal mental states, such as emotions and intentions that inform their behaviour. Theory of mind as an explanation for autism suggests people with autism suffer from mind blindness. This is a defective lack of an innate theory of mind mechanism and explains why autistic people struggle to appreciate the emotional perspective or intentions of others. This is similar to ecocentrism as identified by Piaget. The Salian study, researched by Baron Cohen in 1985, 20 autistic children compared to 14 with Down syndrome and 27 children with typical functioning. Children shown two dolls, Sally and Anne. Sally places a marble in a basket and leaves. Anne moves marble to box. Children are asked, one, where's the marble really? The reality question. Two, where was the marble in the beginning? The memory question. And three, where will Sally look for the marble? The belief question. All children pass question one and two. However, only 20% of autistic children could answer the belief question accurately compared to 85% of normally developed children and 86% of Down syndrome children, showing wrong answers is due to a lack of theory of mind, not simply due to intellectual delay. Evaluations Wilma and Perna, 1983, were the first to use a false belief task to test theory of mind mechanism. Maxie left his chocolate in a blue cupboard in the kitchen and then played outside. Maxie's mother used some chocolate and left the rest in a green cupboard. Children were asked where Maxie will look, None of the 3-4 to four year olds, 57% of the 4-6 to six year olds and 86% of the 6-9 to nine year old children pointed correctly to the green cupboard, suggesting theory of mind develops between 4 and 6 years old for most children. Theory of mind is helpful in understanding the features of autism and ultimately helping to develop coping mechanisms for people with autism and the people who support them. Children who perform poorly on the false belief tasks, like the Sally Ann study, still enjoy role play based play. This playstyle requires a theory of mind mechanism, suggesting it's the complexity of these tasks that lead to poor performance, not lacking a theory of mind mechanism. Theory of mind mechanism as an explanation for autism can explain deficits, but not the special abilities shown by autistic savants. The role of the mirror neuron system in social cognition. It was accidentally found, Rizzolotti, 
When a researcher reached for food in view of a monkey, the monkey's premotor cortex fired. The same neurons the monkey would have used to perform the same action physically. Suggests some neurons act as mirror neurons, allowing simulation of the physical acts of others to better understand intention. The role of the mirror neuron system in social cognition. Researchers argue there are also mirror neurons for stimulating the emotional experience of others, empathy. For example, seeing others in distress, disgust or happy, causes our associated mirror neurons to fire, giving an understanding of the internal emotional state of the other person. A defective mirror neuron system could be an explanation for autism. This would contribute to a lack of theory of mind. Not appreciating others have internal mental states, a mind, such as emotions and attentions. Evaluations. Licoboni, 2005, found an fMRI of 24 participants high levels of mirror neuron activity in both the premotor cortex, but also the inferior frontal gyrus, an area of the brain involved with intentional thinking. Suggests mirror neuron function is not just to stimulate behavior, but to infer the intention of others from their behavior. If defective mirror neurons are responsible for social cognition and explain autism, this opens the possibility for a biological drug therapy to improve the sense of empathy and ultimately social communication in people with autism. Much of the research on mirror neurons has been through looking at groups of neurons in scanning machines like fMRI. This means little is known about mirror neuron activity at the level of individual neurons. The suggestion that the complex processes of social cognition, and in particular empathy, is simply due to the automatic firing of mirror neurons is highly reductionist. The role of learning, for example, of ethical principles and societal norms is important. Don't forget you can now test yourself on the Cognition and Development Unit with the Psychboost app. If you want to try out the app, all of the topics in paper one are free, and you can get it on iOS or Android. If you want to see more answers to questions or access my other resources, there's also Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, I do want to thank all of my patrons for their support. With the help of all of these students and teachers, I'm able to teach part-time so I can work on the main mission of PsychBoost, the development of a free-to-watch and hopefully high-quality A-level psychology course. And a special thank you to Kat Posnick and Ahmed Romani for supporting at the developer level. So thanks to them, good luck with the revision, and I'll see you in the next PsychBoost video.